Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. We've um, kind of, yeah, embraced the Latino community here. The next time you're in Kapa'a and hungry for tacos, there are nine Mexican restaurants to choose from. Punahou Middle School teacher, Kaniela Lyman Macero, shares his experience of sailing on the Hokulea Worldwide Voyage. Two Ladies Kitchen in Hilo serves over 20 flavors of mochi. Hoholi salad is a popular dish made with fern shoots that served in Hana at community gatherings. Master storyteller Tom Cunnings has been informing and entertaining audiences for over 40 years. Nahoku Hano Hano award winner Mark Yamanaka shares his music and some of the struggles he went through to become a Hawaiian musician. All this and more coming to you from Wailua High and Intermediate School on the North Shore of Oahu, home of the Bulldogs. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No. Can do! Our Wailua campus is home to a variety of career and technical education programs, including Studio W, our digital media program. We've undergone some exciting new changes, including a new logo, opportunities to meet industry professionals, and more classes. Studio W now includes classes in digital media and broadcasting media, along with Arts Common Core. Members of Studio W learn valuable team building skills along with their technical training and they participate in Hiki no, the Olelo Youth Exchange, and campus projects. Studio W also invites guest speakers, from film directors to a GoPro creative team, to inspire students to pursue careers in digital media. Our first story takes us to the island of Kauai, where Kapa'a high school reporters investigate why there are so many Mexican restaurants in their small town. Kapa'a Town has two fire stations, three grocery stores, a Starbucks, and nine Mexican restaurants. In such a small town, how could so many Mexican restaurants compete with each other? I don't think it's a competition because everybody has their own style. In Mexico, it's a big, big, big country. Every state has a different type of way to make food. The nine restaurants in Kapa'a serve food from a variety of regions in Mexico, from the coast of Guerrero in southern Mexico to the slopes of Oaxaca to Mexico City. Each has a different style and serves Mexican food in their own unique way. A specialty served at El Pastor is beef tongue. We're the only food truck and restaurant establishment that actually does um, beef tongue. We have a lot of people, all the Filipinos, all the Latinos come in eat it and some, we cook like two or three tongues a day, so. Another item unique to the food truck is cooking meat in the Al Pastor style kitchen. They do the Al Pastor on the rotisserie and it's so yummy, it's like bacon with a Mexican twist. Other restaurants feature homemade tortillas, local ingredients and Hawaiian inspired dishes. Many of these recipes have been passed down from generation to generation. Each dish has a taste of their family's unique history. For Tony of Paco's Tacos, serving agua frescas brings back memories of his youth in Mexico. When we were like little kids, my mom always make us, you know, like lunch and she always choose one flavor to make, like sometimes she make horchata, the rice, rice agua fresca, and uh, sometimes tamarind, sometimes jamaica, the hibiscus tea. And that's what we make here in, uh, in Paco's Tacos. While the spike in restaurants could be because of the delicious food, it could also be due to the rise in the Mexican population. According to a study by the Migration Policy Institute, Hawaii has seen a Mexican population increase of 165% since 1990. There is like a huge population of Latinos actually here. We've um, kind of, yeah, embraced the Latino community here. And they all come to eat and they're all of our regulars. Today, the Aloha spirit is reflected in the values of the Mexican restaurants. We're really grateful to be in Kauai and we're really grateful that we allow, you know, to be making food for all Kauai. It's amazing how every person makes their own flavor. And especially, you know, when you make in a good mood and you make it with love, it is even better. 
and it shows in how the customers are treated. We don't call them customers, we call them guests, because uh, we treat them like, we, that's how we want us to, to treat us, you know, like a guest, like a family member. The addition of Mexican restaurants in our Kapaa family has created a truly unique mixed plate. We serve from our familia to the Ohana, and with mucho aloha, of course. This is John Mark Alumpe from Kapaa High School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We're back at Wailua High and Intermediate School. Join us as we take a look at some historic places on Oahu's North Shore. Pu'u Omuhuka Heiau is a state historic site on the North Shore of Oahu. The Heiau, which is a place of worship for ancient Hawaiians, covers two acres, making it the largest heiau on the island. Ancient Hawaiians had many types of heiau with their own distinct function and social restrictions. It is believed that Pu'u Omohuka heiau was designed to be used by the ali'i, or chief. It was a symbol of his spiritual, economic, political, and social control over his lands and his authority over his people. Pu'u Omohuka heiau was used up until 1819 Following King Kamehameha's death, his heir, Liho Liho, abolished much of the Hawaiian religious system and the heiau was abandoned. Our next story takes place on Oahu, where Punahou School middle schoolers introduce us to one of their teachers, Kaniela Lyman Mercero, who shares some of the lessons he learned while sailing on Hokulea. Punahou Middle School teacher Connie L. Lyman Mercero recently went on a voyage on the iconic Kokulia, traveling around the Pacific Ocean with a stop in New Zealand. With a deep family history with the canoe, Mr. Lyman Mercero felt an attachment to the mission of the Hokulea. Hokulea is, is important to me because it, it played a huge role in shaping the lives of some of those very close to me. My family has been involved, my, my mother in particular, as well as her brothers have been involved since the beginning. I call Hawaii home, so to go out and be a part of Malama Honua, be a part of Hokulea and this ancient tradition that has given so much pride to our islands and given you know this icon that just lives on and on, yeah, that's why it's important to me, because it's part of Hawaii. Life on Hokulea is it's simple, but it's challenging. You really can take the moments to you know, enjoy the little things, the details, you know, just in the water and the clouds, you know, like telling jokes, telling stories. There's a lot of time to work, and you just you get a lot of time to relax. You know, everyone has to be safe, keep themselves safe, and then you got to kind of watch each other. You know, that was one of the big words going around, watch each other. I mean, there's always something to do, coil a line, you know, practice tying new knots, learn new songs. You got to learn all our different olis, our mele, for when we arrived in places, up there at all. And that's another way to bring the crew together. So for me, there was always something going on, as long as you paid attention. As a Punahou Middle School teacher, Mr. Lyman Mercero hopes to bring back the lessons he learned on Hokulea to his class. I think the main purpose is to take it to the next generation. Education is huge. One of the top orders on I know at Thompson and the rest of the leadership's list is how can we help the education system so that we go in a direction where we think more about our environment, more about what we're doing to our, especially you know, our island communities. <laughs> you guys are such angry. No, you got to bring back to students, a lot of the messages, especially that, that whole the, you know, thing that impacted me a lot is just the interaction between people and just knowing how, how important that is and how much you can get done. You know, say your team is your crew, your class is your crew. As long as you work together, you can do phenomenal things. But these things, it's just really, it's a microcosm for all the things that we need to be doing back here. And, you know, that, that doesn't happen enough, especially when you're trying to take care of the environment, you know, the whole Malama Honua thing. It starts with yourself. You can take care of yourself and those around you, and perhaps you can take care of the ocean and our earth. This has been Jenny Yim from Punahou School for Hikino. We are back on the campus of Walua High and Intermediate School on the north shore of Oahu. On the side of our gymnasium is artist Hilton Alves' 2008 mural depicting Waiamea Bay. The mural is part of the Surf Art Kids project to develop environmental awareness in youth and foster respect and love for the ocean and marine life through art. 
The mural took nine days to complete and included the participation of more than 300 students adding their own personal designs. Our next story takes us to the Big Island of Hawaii, where Viaca High School students show us mochi being made in a store that's popular with locals and visitors alike. When I first started this shop, we had probably seven different kinds. However, now 20 years hence, we have probably 20 something varieties. Two Ladies Kitchen started out small, but soon things picked up and business started growing. I believe that when you have a small business in Hilo, they're very supportive. Because uh, we were sort of hidden away and I didn't advertise, it was a word of mouth product. Right now I'm shaping um, plum flour mochi. In the middle it has kochian. Kochian is the smooth taste of the red bean. After picking up steam, the shop quickly gains loyal customers. And I love mochi, so when I heard she was open, I went. and. I was so impressed. So I kept going back. I went about two or three times a month. Two Ladies Kitchen is truly a homegrown business. In the very beginning, there were only two of us who really made the mochi, my aunt and myself. We would practice in my mom's kitchen every Saturday, and she would just teach me different aspects of mochi making. Family has always been a central component of the mochi and manju shop. Uchida and her aunt, Tomi Tokeshi, are the two ladies that started the small shop over 20 years ago. Tokeshi has since retired, but Nora continues to run the business with the help of other family members. These are my parents, um, Sachi and Toshiyasu Kishimoto. And Sunday's her day off, and then every day they come here after their exercise. And that family atmosphere extends to the workers as well. We all know each other. It's like we're brothers and sisters. and. Um, of course, everyone loves mochi. <laughs> no, just the atmosphere that we give to the people, the greeting, you know, the smile. You just get a feeling that it's welcoming. I really like that. Fans of Two Ladies Kitchen stretch from Hilo to the neighbor islands, to the mainland and beyond. One thing's for sure, their customers know to stick to a good thing when they find it. Customers who keep coming back, they're like boyfriend and girlfriend when they first come here. Then they do their showers, their weddings, their first babies, um, you know, grandparents, celebration, their whole family. And this is what I look forward to. This is Casey Laguire from Waikia High School for Hikino. We're back at Wailo High and Intermediate School. Join us now for another look at our North Shore community. The Anahulu River on the North Shore of Oahu is the longest watercourse on the island. It is seven miles long and empties into the eastern end of Wailu Bay at Haleiwa. Anahulu River is best known for the famous bridge that crosses it, commonly known as the Rainbow Bridge. Anahulu River is also a popular location for stand-up paddling and kayaking. The changing tides affect how far one can travel up the freshwater river, but there is always an opportunity to view green sea turtles. This story takes us to the island of Maui, where Hana K-12 students share a favorite Hana recipe, pohole salad. Pohole is an edible fern that the people of Hana use to make a type of salad known here in Hana as pohole salad. Pohole salad is shared during community gatherings and special events. To make this salad, one must pick the young and soft pohole shoots. Run warm water over the pohole to clean it. Mix together pohole, tomato, sweet onion, and cuttlefish. The sauce is made with shoyu, sesame oil, sugar, and garlic. Hana people enjoy making this salad and are happy to share this traditional food with everyone. This is Sarah Kanaka Ole from Hana School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Kiki no Can Do. We're back on Oahu's North Shore at Wailua High and Intermediate School. 
where our participation in the REACH initiative brought a very important visitor. On Tuesday, January 13, 2015, Lieutenant Governor Shan Sisui visited our campus. Lieutenant Governor Sitsui designed the REACH initiative, which stands for Resources for Enrichment, Athletics, Culture, and Health. The goal of this program is to create more opportunities for middle school children to participate in extracurricular activities, sports, and other arts. Wailua is among 11 schools selected to participate in this year's REACH initiative. The REACH initiative benefits Wailua High and Intermediate's after-school programs, including the award-winning VEX IQ and VEX Robotics team, a band program, digital media, graphics, and athletics. This story takes us to Oahu, where Kalani High School students introduce us to a master storyteller who started learning stories at a very young age. Kamapua, the pig god, can change into different kinds of forms. Here's an example of what he can change himself to. When you look at the kukui nut tree, you will see him in that pig form when you look at the leaf. And all I have to do is just turn it around and let you look at the sketch, and there is his face is looking at you. Thomas Cummings, a master storyteller, has been informing and delighting audiences for over 40 years with the stories of Hawaii. When I talk about being a storyteller, it had to begin when I was growing up as a child. And it had to begin learning about stories by listening to your parents and your neighbors and your uncles and your aunties and even the friends that you go to school with. And it occurs to me that what I learned in my early childhood as I'm growing up, I can use that telling as part of my education, including using objects or stuff. Mr. Cummings captivates his audiences with his interactive storytelling to help visualize Hawaii's mythical as well as native world views. So the story they tell is that Maui cut off the head of the eel and the heel fell into the head of John Brown and grew as an open tree. That's the main thing. Why am I interested in using stuff when I'm telling stories? And my answer to that is why not? It's the best way to tell somebody about somebody else or what's happening in front of you. I've always discovered that. And so I'm saying to myself, if you want to be smart about telling, don't just use the sound of your voice. Use the sound of your voice and get help from stuff, whatever it means. So that's why I'm passionate about it and why I use it all the time. Take it out of the way, but this one is for your wrist. Is it beautiful? Here at the Halu Moa Heritage Center in Waikiki, Mr. Cummings continues Princess Poahi's legacy to educate audiences about Hawaii and its culture. This is Anya Carroll from Kalani High School for Hikino. We're back on the North Shore of Oahu at Lokoea Fish Pond, a sustainable fish pond with a long, rich history. Lokoea is an ancient Hawaiian fish pond that is being restored for cultural and environmental education. The fish pond was originally used to cultivate native Hawaiian fish, which were then distributed along the North Shore. Today, volunteers gather to remove invasive species, such as California grass. The end goal of this project is to restore the site to a functioning fish pond, managed by the local community through the Malama Local Air Foundation, and providing food for the people in the area. Musician Mark Yamanaka shares his passion for Hawaiian music with students at Mid-Pacific Institute on Oahu. Mark Yamanaka has won eight Nahoku Hanohano Awards, including Male Vocalist of the Year and Album of the Year for both his CDs, Leipua Kenny Kenny in 2011 and Le Miley in 2014. Both of his CDs reached the top 10 on Billboard's world album charts. The hokus are great. And I'm going to speak for myself because there are so many people out there that really live by trying to win a hoku. Because, you know, it is the highest honor of musicianship here in the islands. 
Mm -hmm. um, I've never strived for that, you know? When I release CDs or make music, I want to make music for the audience, for myself, for my kids, for my family, so that it'll live forever. There were a lot of challenges for me um, being uh, non-Hawaiian doing Hawaiian music, I would say, is was a huge burden on my shoulders. And I don't think a lot of people realized what I, what I was feeling inside, you know, in my mind and in my heart. My next challenge from those thoughts were to learn Hawaiian music to the best of my ability and gain respect from, from all these uh, people that I've admired who, that, who had performed Hawaiian music. And I think that was my primary goal as, as a musician growing up. So, you know, for all you folks out there that love Hawaiian music, just do it, you know. Learn it, learn it properly, learn it, do it the right way with the language and everything will be okay. There's no wrong in doing it. This is Bailey Ogawa from Mint Pacific Institute for Hikino. We're back on the north shore of Oahu at Wailuo High and Intermediate School, where one student must balance his classes and career. Kalani David began surfing at age two and competing at age five. Eight years later, Kalani qualified for the Surfing World Qualifying Series, where he is currently ranked number 37. He is also a professional skateboarder and travels the world surfing and skating. How do I balance my career and school? Um, well, it's like having two jobs. They're both the most important things in my life at the moment. And uh, I need my high school diploma to be able to go on with my career and follow my dreams. But uh, anyone can do it. Anyone can do anything if you put your mind to it. You know, if, if you want to surf and skate at the same time, you got to learn how to, you know, be spot on and you got to learn how to go to bed early, you got to train, you got to do a lot of this stuff. So school is just something that's given to you in life. It's like a roadblock and once you get over it, it's, you know, the light's there and you're there. Well, we reached the end of this episode of Hikino. The stories presented were written, shot and edited by students just like us. We've enjoyed sharing these stories with you. We hope that you've enjoyed watching them and learned something new. Don't forget to tune in to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students hiki know. Can do!
Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.